Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year to all of you. A delight to be in the Lord's house. Uh, as we begin 2023, uh, just want to highlight a couple things. A reminder, pancake breakfast is next Sunday. Uh, look forward to that. Uh, if you can help by making a pan of bars, you can bring those uh, to church next Sunday morning. Uh, we're having a benefit meal for the Donner family two weeks from today. That'll be in the evening from 4 to 7. Uh, if you'd like to donate a big sale item for that as well, contact the school officer, Amy Leeski. Greeters, we had some greeters this morning. Wasn't that great to have people saying good morning, welcome to church? So sign up. Uh, we'll get some more people uh, to do that each week. Poinsettias are on the table in the fellowship hall. If you uh, ordered one and didn't take it last Sunday after Christmas Day service, uh, you can do so today. The calendar says there's choir this Wednesday night. There is no choir this Wednesday night. Choir will resume uh, a week from Wednesday. Uh, and then just a reminder, if you have time to stop by next Saturday afternoon, we're just having a little open house. Uh, it could get pretty crowded, it's okay. We don't have a big house, but just a reminder, my wife said, remind him we live in a split level. You have to go up a few stairs to get in the house, just to make you aware of that. So, uh, uh, all right. We gather at the Lord's table today. What a joy it is to receive the blessings that he gives us there with his body and blood. Uh, our order of service is Divine Service Setting 4, and our first hymn, one of my favorite Christmas hymns, 387, Joy to the World. Blessings to all of you this day. <clears throat> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, 
as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And continue as we sing responsibly the intro. When I was a child, I loved him. is heard in Rhema. Rachel is weeping for her children. Thus says the Lord, keep your voice from weeping. Maker and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May we see The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday after Christmas is from Isaiah, chapter 63. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted us, and the good, great goodness to the house of Israel that he has granted them according to his compassion. 
according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, Surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior. In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore he turned to be their enemy and himself fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old of Moses and his people. Where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is he who put in the midst of them his Holy Spirit, who caused his glorious arm to go with the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths? Like a horse in the desert, they did not stumble. Like livestock that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So you led your people to make for yourself a glorious name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand together for the Alleluia, the verse of the gospel. <laughs> St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. When the wise men had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then it was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be comforted because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth. That was what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From the 
seated. We continue with hymn 389. Let all together praise our God. 389. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we heard again last Saturday night and, and Sunday morning, we heard that story we know so well, right? The story of Christmas, the story of the birth of the Son of God, the Son of God for us, right? We heard the wonderful gospel from St. Luke that tells us again of the journey to Bethlehem, the manger, the angels, the shepherds. And then last Sunday morning we heard, once again, St. John tell us, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, today, St. Matthew tells us exactly what kind of world that Jesus was born into, that wonderful story we heard last week, and it's quite a different place. He's born into a, a world of jealousy, a, a world of hate, a world of sorrow, a world of deception, a world of anger, a world of inconvenience, a world of trouble, a world of fear. Or in other words, your world. He was born into your world. For are not all these things what plague you as well? They are the fruits of sin, the sin that continues to make this world quite a different place than it was created to be, quite a different place than it was ever meant to be. We, we call these the, the fruits that hang off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, those fruits that still tempt us today, right? 
fruits that look so good. They, they look so tasty. They looks like just what we need, but once we sink our teeth into them, they produce nothing but evil, nothing but bitterness, nothing but strife, nothing but sadness. Y you know it. I mean, think about it. The last time you exploded in anger, did that solve your problem? Really? Or the last time you seethed in hatred, did that make things better? Or the last time you burned with jealousy, did you get what you wanted? Or the last time you stewed in resentment, did that satisfy you? Yet, how often do we do these things? How often do we keep doing them? Or have them done to us, causing sadness, causing division, causing fear, causing so much hurt. So Jesus, he, he comes and doesn't just have the really cool stuff happen to him that we heard about last Saturday evening and Sunday morning, right? The angels, the shepherds, the wise men. No, he comes to this. He comes to our this. He goes through what we go through. What, what you go through. Whatever sin has stung you, Jesus has felt it too. And that's what we hear from Matthew today. God's people have to go to Egypt to save their life. Jesus too. His people are brought out of Egypt by God. Jesus too. They, they can't go home right away, however. Jesus too. They live in the midst of their enemies. Jesus too. They live in the midst of sorrow and death. Jesus too. The first few years of the life of Jesus were, were spent traveling. They were spent fleeing, living in weird and unusual places and in fear of life itself. Merry Christmas. Well, yes, actually. I mean, that, that is, in fact, what makes Christmas is merry, that God came to be with us in all of this. That Jesus came to protect us, that Jesus came to rescue us from, from all of this. From all the sin that plagues us from without and the sin that plagues us from within. You've heard me say it many times and I'll say it many times again. God never promised you an easy life. He never promised he would keep all trouble from you. He never promised he would give you all you want. He never promised he would make you better off than everyone else. Well, maybe that's true for you, but probably not. But what he has promised, what he has promised you is what you hear today, that whatever happens to you, he will be with you through it all. And so, yes, Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us. And God with us at just the right time. That's what St. Paul says today in our second reading. When the fullness of time had come. Or at just the right time. God sent forth his son. I suppose after hearing all we did today in, in Matthew. It sure didn't seem like the right time. And if you think about it a little more broadly. It sure doesn't seem like the right place either. I mean. Look at the location, right in the backyard of a fearful, jealous king. It just doesn't seem the optimal place for his birth. But, of course, it was. All of it. According to plan. Because nothing can stop what God has ordained. The, the beginning of Jesus' life, it's not trouble or worry-free. But he is protected and he is preserved. Which should tell us something when a few years later suddenly Jesus is not protected and preserved. Right? When a few years later one of his own turns on him. He's arrested, beaten, treated as the worst kind of criminal and then hung up to die on a criminal's cross 
to die. That Roman warning to the world, do not be like this man or this is what will happen to you. This too, then, is God's will. This is the plan. Everything to fulfill God's word, everything to fulfill God's will. Now we're going to hear that a lot this year as we read through Matthew's gospel. It, it's one of his themes, one of his most used phrases. This was to fulfill. It's not an accident. It's not chance or fate. It is God for you, God saving you, even if that saving doesn't happen exactly as you think it should. And it's the prophet Isaiah that helps us think about that a bit. Right, he starts out today's Old Testament reading by saying, let me tell you of the steadfast love of the Lord. And then he talks about Moses and the Exodus. And he talks about how the people rebelled and grieved his spirit. You know the story, but let's think about it just a moment, about why they rebelled, why they grieved him, and, and if it's not the same as what we've been thinking about. Right, so God brings his people out of Egypt. That's great. But then in a day or two, they, they find themselves trapped, remember? Trapped between the Red Sea on one side and the Egyptian army on the other. So is this how God's going to save us? Is, is this what your plan is, really? Well, then they travel to Mount Sinai where, where Moses disappears for 40 days. So God, is this how you're going to save us? Is this what your plan is, really? Then they find themselves in the desert. No water, no food. So God, is this how you're going to save us? Is this what your plan was, really? Well, then they get to the border of the promised land, remember? And they discover the people living there. Wow, they're really big. They're really strong. So God, is this how you're going to save us? Is this what your plan was, really? See a pattern here? The people wondering about God and his plan and his ways. Yet God saving his people. It's, it's not always easy. It may not always make sense to us, but it is God in his steadfast love saving his people. His love rescuing. His love disciplining. His love providing. His love struggling. To make for himself, Isaiah says, a glorious name. Not because he needs the glory, but so that all the world would know his glory and know him as their father. To know him as a God of love, as a God that's dependable and reliable and saving. A God that doesn't walk away when the going gets tough, but loves, loves all the way to the cross. So now to your life. Not the right time, not the right place, not making sense to you. Lord, I really don't need this cross in my life right now. God divided the Red Sea. Moses came back down the mountain with the word of the Lord. God provided food and water in the desert. God defeated those big bad people in the promised land. God came as a baby. God hung on the cross. God died for you. God rose from the dead for you. God gives you his spirit. God baptized you and made you his child. God forgives you. God feeds you here with his body and blood. God gives you parents to protect and raise you. God gives you friends to help and care for you. God gives you your body and life and all that you have God gives you a family and a church. God, yes, is Emmanuel. God is with us still. Not exactly what you had in mind. Maybe that's a good thing. You think maybe we've tried on our own long enough? So maybe it's time to try love instead of anger. Confession instead of excuses. Forgiveness instead of revenge. Gladness instead of jealousy. Service instead of selfishness. Prayer 
instead of spite. Receiving all of this from him who came to be with us in our sin. And then giving all this to those he sends to us now. St. Paul says today, because of Jesus, we are no longer slaves to sin, but sons of God. Yes, God fulfilling his plan for you. God providing for you. Emmanuel has come. Merry Christmas indeed. God with us. Amen. And now may the peace of God, that peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Let us stand together as we continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The heavens are the work of your fingers, yet you will to save us in the most humble and sacrificial of ways. Already eight days after being born of the Virgin Mary, your son was at work for our salvation by fulfilling your law and shedding his blood. Receive our heartfelt thanks for the righteousness and forgiveness of sins we have obtained through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, blessed God, you sent your son into our flesh. And as an infant, he first shed the blood that would cleanse from our sin. Accept our thanks for the loving kindness shown to us sinners. Grant us a steadfast faith that we would not forget all your benefits or lose sight of your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, you have shown your power by establishing governments and leaders to serve your people in your name. Grant to our president, governor, Congress, legislatures, judges, and magistrates the wisdom and courage to act with integrity on behalf of all people, especially those least able to defend themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, bless and keep us by your grace. Remember those in need who cry out to you. Be especially with Joanne, Carol, Verona, Leroy, Dave, B, Greg, Jean, Micah, Jim, Shirley, Steve, Al, Dorothy, Marlene, and Harlan. According to your will and wisdom, lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we gather this day, we thank and praise you for the blessings of life that you gave to Peter Sauer, the brother of Rachel Hins, who has passed away. Strengthen the family in the days ahead with the comfort and the sure hope, the resurrection of all flesh through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, you invite your children to the table of your Son. Give us your Holy Spirit that we would discern Christ's body and blood in this sacrament and come with joyful and repentant hearts to receive the foretaste of the eternal feast. Strengthen us by this blessed communion that we would love you above all and love one another in your name. Lord, in your mercy. This and all that is upon our hearts we lift before you this day in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated as we gather our offerings to the Lord.
stand together as we continue with the preface as we prepare to come to the Lord's table this day. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In the beginning you created all things by your word, and in the fullness of time your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let your word made flesh dwell richly among us, that faithfully eating his body and drinking his blood we may receive the fullness of your grace and truth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us stand together as we continue with the number of things. thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. May be seated for our closing hymn, 725, Children of the Heavenly Father, 725. <coughs> 